Welcome to On My Bookshelf. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at this book here, Apollo Remastered by Andy Saunders. Before I start, if you are a flat earther or space denier, this isn't the book or video for you. I'm just saying. But now that that's out of the way, let me tell you about this book. I first found out about Apollo Remastered when the author, Andy Saunders, was interviewed about his book over on the MC2 Photography Channel. That video is well worth watching, so I'll include a link for it in the video description below and at the end screen of this video. Anyway, after I saw that video, I knew this was a book I wanted on my bookshelf. After all, it has two of my favourite things in it, photography and space. So I ordered a copy as a Christmas present to myself. The first thing you notice about this book is its size. It's 456 pages and measures approximately 30 centimetres by 32 centimetres. It's big and you'll likely spend many happy hours reading it. I know I did. The book documents NASA's journey to the moon, all the way from those pre-Apollo missions of Mercury and Gemini, and all of the Apollo missions, including the landing on the moon with Apollo 11, and that final trip to the moon with Apollo 17. Now, while many of us will be familiar with the photographs of this period, what Andy has done with them is truly magical. Once the original photographic films had been returned to Earth, they were processed, and after duplicates were made, they were placed in a secure, environmentally controlled building. Then, between 2008 and 2018, there was a project to create high resolution scans of the films using the latest technologies. So, for example, a single Hasselblad 70mm frame created a 1.3 gig raw 16 bit TIFF file. And for the book, Andy inspected over 20,000 of those Hasselblad frames. He then painstakingly remastered those raw files to bring out the very best of them. And honestly, the results are amazing. The levels of detail, sharpness, colour and contrast are striking in some of these photographs. If you've ever seen that 4K version of the Todd Douglas Miller documentary film about Apollo 11, you'll appreciate how amazing footage, even from the 60s, can be made to look. And if you haven't seen that, I'll include a link for that video in the description below. The book opens with text from JFK's famous speech. I expect many of you will be familiar with some of the lines from that speech, but for me, it's the first time I've ever read it in full. Then there's an introduction by Andy, where he goes on to talk about how the missions created some of history's most important photographs, such as Blue Marble and Earthrise. He talks more about the remastering process and how he looked at over 35,000 images, all the way from 16 millimeter movie film to that 70 millimeter Hasselblad medium format. And it's not just the photographs. A significant amount of work has gone into getting the sequencing right, identifying the photographers, and getting the titles and captions correct. The book then moves on to the main chapters. First up are the details and photographs from those pre-Apollo missions. It's a fascinating insight into the space projects Mercury and Gemini. The text that starts each chapter is well worth reading. I was aware of these projects, but I didn't know how they fitted in to the biggest program. The captions are also well worth reading. For example, I learned that while Yuri Gagarin was the first man in space, no film camera was taken. Alan Shepard, the first American in space, was the first person to take images of the curvature of the Earth. Those pre-Apollo missions also created many other first photographs. First sunrise and sunset from space, first portrait of a human in space, even the first selfie taken with a Hasselblad SWC and amazingly in the photograph you can see the earth and the sun reflected in his visor. The bulk of the book then follows the Apollo missions from Apollo 7 to 17. Each chapter gives you a wonderful insight into the mission with all the details, the crew, how the mission went and of course the photography. Those photographs are beautifully remastered and they capture so many iconic and important moments. There's the first full Earth photo. Earthrise, perhaps one of the most famous photographs in the world. The captions add lots of context and information. For example, D 
Did you know that they added fuel to Apollo 9 to allow the craft to be orientated for better photography? One of the most important chapters is, of course, Apollo 11. The book covers the mission in glorious photographic detail, from inside the spacecraft to the surface of the moon. There was a real sense of isolation in the photographs, and you also realise how much work they had to do up there. Apollo 12 used a lot of black and white photography and produced some stunning images, and I find myself strangely lost in the detail of this boot print, or this truly unique picture of Earth clips as the Earth eclipses the Sun. Most people know about the events of Apollo 13, but I'd always thought that they reported, Houston, we have a problem, but it's actually, we've had a problem. Obviously, not a lot of photography was taken on that mission. They had other things to worry about, but there are some shots of damaged craft that I have never seen before. The Apollo 15 chapter is one of my favorites. It was also one of the longest missions on the surface and it produced some stunning photos. The book also contains some fold out three page panoramic photographs. The last few chapters are packed full of information on space photography, all the way from how it started with Mercury to how it was used in Apollo. Also talks about cameras, lenses, films, and why photography was so important to the lunar missions. Then there is a chapter on image restoration. If there is one chapter that really needs to be studied, it's this one. Now, I hate to use the word fascinating again, but what Andy has done with some of these raw files and 16 millimeter film is frankly bonkers. Even the work that went into capturing these photographs is hugely impressive. They include descriptions, cameras, and even what was being said at the time. So is this a book for your bookshelf? Well, for me, it's absolutely a yes. I appreciate the photographs weren't captured by Andy, but what he has done with them is outstanding. He has taken some of the most important photographs in history and given them a new lease of life. Looking at some of the photographs in this book, you might have been mistaken for thinking the moon landings only happened a few years ago. They have given me new perspectives on Earth, the moon, the Apollo program, and the brave men who put their life on the line in the name of exploration and discovery. But the photographs are just one aspect of this book. There is vast quantities of information about each space flight, the astronauts, the conversations that went on, the challenges they faced, and why photography was such a key component of the Apollo program. However, as much as I love this book, I do have a couple of minor gripes. Firstly, most of the pages are black, which makes them fingerprint magnets. So make sure you have clean hands when you're flicking through it. And sometimes the contrast between sort of whitish gray text and the black page did make the text a little hard to read sometimes. However, neither of these things would stop me recommending this book. Apollo Remastered by Andy Saunders is one of those books that highlights why photography is so very important. Now, if you'd like to pick up a copy of this book, I'll include a link for it in the video description below. I do hope you have enjoyed this episode of On My Bookshelf. If you've got an extra few minutes, why not enjoy another episode from the On My Bookshelf playlist, which is appearing in the corner of the screen. Even if space isn't your thing, there is sure to be something to inspire your photography from the 40 plus episodes available. And if you did enjoy this episode, please do hit that like button, leave me a comment, and of course, subscribe and hit that bell button. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you soon for another episode of On My Bookshelf.